So I was assigned this project from my computer science class to make a maze game in Scratch. All I had to do was make a maze, a player which could walk around the maze to an exit, and a ball that goes back and forth and kills you if you touch it. So the really weird touch. <laughs> now, I've been using Scratch for quite a while, so this was naturally very easy for me. So I decided to challenge myself a bit and turn it into a horror game. I started working on this project at school, so I couldn't record at the beginning, so sorry about that. It doesn't really matter that much though, I'll still explain those parts. So, I started by creating a new project. I called it Maze. I'm very good at naming things. There was a video that showed you how to do everything for the project, but the first thing I did was throw the movement code they made out the window and made my own. So now that I had done that, the next step was to actually make a maze. However, making a maze is a lot of work and quite frankly I was too lazy to do it. So I did what any reasonable person would do in this situation and made some code to automatically generate mazes for me. I already made a randomly generated maze system before but I made it in Unity not Scratch. So all I really had to do was rewrite it in Scratch. That should be pretty easy, right? Yeah, it, it was pretty easy. In hindsight, this probably took like twice the amount of time that it would have taken to just make a maze, but hey, it adds replayability, so whatever. <laughs> Let me quickly explain how I made randomly generated mazes. I used an algorithm called a growing tree algorithm or something like that, I don't know. Basically, it uses a list of nodes. Each node is a point in the maze and has four sides that could be turned on and off. I made two lists, one for the remaining nodes and one for the current path. The growing tree algorithm picks a starting point on the maze and adds it to the current path removing it from the remaining nodes. Then it checks in all four directions to see which ones are available. Then it picks a random direction and goes in it, adding it to the current node's list and removing it from the available node's list. If the current node has no possible direction it can go in, it converts into what I like to call a finish node. It removes itself from the current node list and the next node in the list gets calculated again. When there are no remaining nodes in either the available nodes list or the current nodes list, that means that all nodes are were used in the maze it finished being generated. I finally got the maze generation finished, and as you can see, it works pretty well. After that, I added randomized start and end positions for the player. The player always spawns towards the middle of the maze, and the exit always spawns on the edges of it. I also improved the kit box of the cat so he wouldn't constantly get his leg or whiskers caught on wall. At this point, I was too lazy to work on anything difficult, so I started working on a menu screen. It's pretty basic right now, but it gets the job done. I even made two difficulties that you can switch between. Then I started working on another major part of the game, the key pieces. I decided on making four maze pieces that are spread around the maze for you to collect. It's a simple system, but it adds some difficulty to the game. Or at least, it will when there's actually a monster to avoid. Right now, it just wastes your time even more. Then I continue working on the menu again. I tried adding a system of darkness where the area around the player was lit up and everything around it was shadows, but I couldn't come up with a good way to do this, so I scrapped the idea. The reason I wanted to do this was to add exploration fear and most importantly to hide the monster's location. To compromise, I decided to make the monster invisible until it starts hunting you. After that, I made a pathfinding system so that I could finally add the monster into the game. I don't have any footage of making the pathfinding system. I had no idea what I was doing, so I had to watch a tutorial. I swear though, this is the only thing that I had to look up. <laughs> After the pathfinding system was finished, it was time to start working on the monster's AI. I was going to add two phases to the AI, wandering and hunting. It starts in its wandering phase where the target position goes to a random maze node every 5 seconds and the monster tries to get to it. Then if the monster is in line of sight of the player, it will go into its hunting phase. There's a 1 second grace period where the monster can't move or kill you, and after that it chases you. If it's in line of sight of you, it will charge at you at a fast speed that you can't get outrun. However, if it is not in line of sight of you, it slows down, allowing you to run away. The hardest part about the hunts is that if you get far enough from the monster, it turns invisible and you don't know where it is. But hey, that just adds difficulty. I eventually changed the uh, wait, the grace period to 2 seconds instead of 1 second, but as of right now, it's at, it's at 1 second. I started by adding the wandering system and fixing some pathfinding bugs. Then I added a ray casting system to check for a line of sight. After that, I finally made the hunts. The way the hunts work is there's a hunt timer. Whenever you're in line of sight of the monster, the hunt timer resets. When you're not in line of sight, the hunt timer goes down. When it reaches zero, the hunt, the hunt ends. Pretty simple. Then I added a nice vignette effect. Vignette? Is, is that even how you pronounce it? 
vignette. Vignette. That's a weird pronunciation. This vignette effect <laughs> would intensify the closer you are to the monster. This is a good indicator of where it is so you can avoid it. It also serves as a way to add some tension. I tried adding a red version of the vignette effect to indicate hunts and show how much longer the hunt will last. However, adding this completely broke the collision, so sadly I had to remove it. Instead, I made the regular vignette flash whenever the monster was hunting. Then I realized that I did all of this and there still wasn't a way to actually die yet. So I got to work on that. I made a nice death screen with glitchy text that says you died and looks pretty nice. Of course, I decided to make the death screen black, which is in direct contrast to the white windscreen. This doesn't matter much now, but later on, it meant needing to do extra work to make text work on both screens. After that, I started working on the stats screen. This was where I had to do extra work because of the different colored backgrounds between the wood and loose screens. The text had to be different colors, which meant I had to do twice the work, but it's fine. Works pretty well. Sadly, scratch variables are pretty annoying and I have to have these stupid orange boxes, but oh well, it works. I fixed more pathfinding and monster movement bugs. These come up pretty often. And then I started working on improving the maze. The thing about my maze generation is that while it works pretty well, it isn't the greatest. One problem is the, ma the small size of the maze itself. It just doesn't have many opportunities for branching paths. It works fine as a maze, but try adding a monster into the mix and suddenly you're running into dead ends and dying all the time. To fix this, I decided to make it so that nodes have a random chance to remove some of its sides because quite frankly I was too lazy to try to redo the entire maze generation system. This took way longer than it should have. <laughs> There were just so many issues and so many bugs. My code was messy because it's Scratch and Scratch doesn't have very good tools for organizing code. So I spent a long time on this and really lost my sanity. I started by trying to make sure everything was working by removing everything besides the outer wall. I kept getting issues with outside walls getting removed and inner walls not getting removed. I luckily managed to fix the outer wall issues, but I could never fix the inner wall ones. I did get to a point where it was good enough though and I went with that. All I had to do then was make it a small random chance and boom, we are alternating paths and to make the gameplay more interesting and less frustrating. It's not perfect, but it's better than it was before. In hindsight, it would have been nice to go with a different maze generation algorithm that is better fit for this kind of gameplay, but this works well enough for me. There wasn't much more to add at this point. The only other things I had planned was more difficulties, ghost types, and bug fixing. I worked on adding difficulties in school so I don't have footage of the beginning of it. I added two difficulties, Hard and Nightmare. The old one, previously named Spook Mode, was renamed to Easy Mode. On harder difficulties, the key piece spawning gets changed too, in theory, spread them out a bit more. It also makes the monsters more dangerous the more key pieces you collect. The next step was to fix the menu screen. There were a lot of visual bugs relating to the difficulty boxes moving and spawning the wrong way. I ended up redoing all of the code that I was using to move around the boxes, and it worked pretty well. I even took the time to make the new system expandable so that it would be easy to add more difficulties if I ever choose to, which I probably never will. If you press the arrows too fast, they glitch out a bit, but they quickly fix themselves so it's not a big deal. I also added some extra flair to the background to make it look more intense the more higher difficulty you go. This added a surprising amount of bugs and issues, but I fixed them all. The next thing I wanted to add was monster types. This would, in theory, make the rounds a little less monotonous and add some variety to the gameplay. It didn't help much. I want more variety, but there's only so much I can do with Scratch's limitations, and at this point I'm pretty sure the game already doesn't run well enough on Chromebooks to be considered playable, so I just did the best with what I could, okay? This didn't take long to add. I gave all the different types names so you can easily see which kind you're facing with in the stats screen. There's only one more thing I wanted to add at this point, a guide. This is pretty straightforward, it has three sections, how to play, tips, and monster types. It's pretty easy to make, but as usual there were a lot of bugs that I had to fix. Then I was finally done with Maze. There's still an annoying bug in the game where the ray casting goes through walls, but I have no idea what's causing it or how to fix it and it's not terrible, so I just decided it was good enough. I'm quite certain that I met all the requirements at this point. Now, technically, I'm missing the random ball that moves back and forth, but I hope this monster is a good enough substitute. Otherwise, I'm going to take a knife and stab myself with it. There's only one thing left to do at this point, and that is to share the game and turn in the project. And that's about it. 
I'll show you some gameplay here because I can. Uh, so we're gonna go in nightmare mode because I made the game so I should be good enough. <laughs> in theory. Wow, that is a convenient key spot. Actually, that is not convenient at all because the monsters get spawn right there. <laughs> I almost fell for that. All right, whatever. Thanks, game. <laughs> um, I'll just collect all the pieces. I, I feel like I need to make this a bit more eventful. <laughs> nothing, nothing ever happened. Oh, this is nightmare mode. Okay, he's be. No, he's not beyond the wall. Okay, okay, okay. Is he the fast one? Oh my god. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yep, he was the fast one. <laughs> Death. Death is the fast one. Okay. Cool. Uh, you know what? Well, we'll try that again. <laughs> All right, let's see here. This this time we spawn in a. Uh, well, this is actually a terrible place for these two key pieces. <laughs> I could get trapped here and die, but that's all right. We're not gonna do that. And now these two key pieces are in inconvenient places. Well, that's all right. In fact, yeah, this is gonna suck. But you know what? It's all good. Let's just. Run, just run. I don't think it's death, it's all good. It was, okay. <laughs> well, it's a good thing I didn't test it, I guess, because otherwise it would've just died. All right, well, let, let's do another run, because I only won once. Also, the game does not have sound effects, I apologize. <laughs> that is not a key, like that, this key piece up here is not a key piece that I want to leave for last. Okay, and now I'm being hunted. Great. Wait, no, this is a horrible idea. No, I just want to run past him. Ready? Alright. Should be good. Alright, it's all good. <clears throat> Everything's fine. Uh, this is a... In inconvenient spot. He teleported, I think. Okay, cool. Well, that's convenient, because I was in a very bad place. Okay, uh, never mind then. He's just gonna kill me here. No, or not kill me, but attempt to. I don't even know. Oh, jeez, there he is. Oh, wait, that was a terrible idea. Alright, whatever. It's fine. Yeah, this is not gonna... Run past him. Cool, there we go. We're good. Ooh, yep. Yep. It's fine. See, we are- this is not good. No, no, please. Oh, that was really close. Oh, yo, he got stuck. Alright, I'll take it. Whatever. Is he- is he actually just stuck there? Um... Hello? <laughs> oh, he's gone, okay. <laughs> well, he's not stuck there anymore, that's for sure. Alright, please don't have it teleported up here. Alright, we're good, we're good. Alright, there we go. It was a Shado, that was like the, that's like the basic one. We got five hunts, okay. <laughs> Let's do another one. All right, uh, this one is a very convenient place, actually, that's great. These ones, this one in particular, this one's in a kind of bad place. Yeah, because we got all of this where you just, you just kind of screwed if he chases you here. So yeah, we're gonna take that and then immediately run. <laughs> I have not seen this dude the entire game, or more accurately, I did not see he, he's not- I've not been close to him the entire game. Okay. Alright, well, there we go. There he is. Hello. Alright, now if I go up here... And wait for him. He's like right here. Oh, he's gone. Okay. Alright, time to run to the exit. <laughs> I hope he's all the way up there. He, he not, he's not gonna be able to get to me. <laughs> it's all good. I'll do one more round. Okay, that... This is this is just dumb. <laughs> Why did it spawn there? 
that is the best place for it to spawn. But I was trying to show off the difficulty, and I'm just getting the most, like, convenient KP spawns. Wow, that this was the easiest game. Like we don't, we don't even get hunted at the end. Wow, zero hunts <laughs> on nightmare, <laughs> and it was a myth. I don't remember what they do. I made the game. Let's see. <laughs> Myths are charge pretty slow, but they hunt almost. Oh yeah, that's right. These ones are really dangerous. You know what? We'll do one more because that was really easy. <laughs> um. All right, that is once again. You know what? No, I'm gonna click this one first. Okay, this. Never mind. <laughs> I think this might be myth. Wait, <laughs> why did I go over here? If I get trapped here, this is gonna suck. Now let's just go down here. Hope for the best. Is he up here? Mm -mm. Uh, let's go collect this one. All right, so to be smart, I just wanna do that to add some extra challenge because we are getting really lucky with these key piece spawns for some reason. But let's let's collect this one. Let's now now that I just kind of screwed myself over on purpose. Let's be smart. All right, he's like right over there somewhere. So we should be good. There, there he is. Yeah, see, he's. Oh wait. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yep, that's definitely a myth. Yep. All right, I was right. It was a myth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're good. All right, that's enough playing this stupid game. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to be remaking this game in Unity and make it a lot better because let's face it, this game kind of sucks. <laughs> I'm going to be streaming it on my Twitch channel at some point. I don't know. I'm also going to be making devlogs about it. So if this video was entertaining in the slightest, there's more to come. Anyway, if you liked the video, leave a like and a comment in the, in the section below. Subscribe to me if you're not already for more videos, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!